Now, prior to the amendment of 2016, this is important for the reason that when I make my argument as to what this slew of amendments has done, it has, on the one hand, my lord, introduced an opaque instrument by which nobody can come to know other than the government. It is only the government who may be able to come to know as to who has contributed to whom, because under the scheme, state bank has to issue the electoral bond. So state bank has a record of who has purchased which electoral bond. Now, of course, the bonds are bearer bonds. They are freely transferable. So suppose I purchase the bond, state bank will know that, yes, I have purchased this bond, but I can hand it over to somebody else and that somebody else can give it to a political party. The political party also may not come to know who has donated political party. It's open for a political party to say that, well, we opened our office in the morning and we saw these 100 crores of electoral bonds lying under our, under our door. We deposited these electoral bonds. We don't know who has given them. But these are bearer bonds. So therefore, all that the political party will disclose in their accounts would be that out of the total contributions that they have received, donations that they have received, they have received 500 crores by way of electoral bonds. That they have received total 700 crores, out of which 500 crores are from electoral bonds. That's all. But that match of who purchased this electoral bond, and which party and cash this particular electoral bond, that match, if at all, it can only be done by the state bank, which is a government of India institution. Of course, state bank is also effectively prohibited from disclosing it. But the scheme says that if a law enforcement agency needs to know this, get this information, it may ask the state bank to disclose this. So if at all, only a law enforcement agency, which are all essentially controlled by the government, or the government itself, because it controls the state bank, can come to know only this much, that this particular bond was purchased by this company, and this was encashed by this party. But nobody else can come to know this information under the scheme of electoral bonds. Nobody else. They are not even the election commission, because the only account that is submitted to the election commission by the political parties is that we receive so much by way of electoral bonds. They are not obliged to disclose who gave them. In fact, they may even say we don't know who gave it. We opened our office. It was lying under the door. We encashed it. So therefore, they may even turn around and say that. In fact, there is an interim order of this court in this very case by which this court said that all political parties should disclose the donors of these electoral bonds to the election commission pending the hearing of this case. There is an interim order to that effect. But when that information is finally seen, I dare say, my lord, that some of these political parties would have said, we don't know. Still on the SBI uh, issuing bonds uh, to persons who are not residents in India? Well, uh, yes, the requirement is that they have to give a KYC, whoever purchases electoral bonds. So the identity of the person who purchases the electoral bonds will be known to the State Bank of India. But, but because they have now opened the route by uh, making this amendment that uh, the limit of 7.5% of the annual profits has been totally removed. So even if you are a loss-making company or even if you are a company which does no business, just a pure shell company, let's say, my lord, your lordship is aware that in that uh, Adani Sebi matter, they are saying, Sebi is saying, we don't know who are, whether these companies who have invested in the Adani companies from Mauritius and from these tax havens, whether they are in fact owned by Adani or not, or whether they are related to Adani or not. Now it is open to any of these companies to set up a subsidiary in India and donate to any political party of their choice any amount 
even if it's a pure shell company which means no business no profits just an amount is received from its parent company which is registered in a tax haven and that amount is given to a political party in our written submissions my lord mentioned that we are challenging in our petition also we are challenging the amendments brought in fcra by the finance act of 2016 so first my lord in 2016 and the issue about whether they could have been brought through the finance act or not i am not pressing right now though we have taken that issue in our petition but i am not pressing it for the reason that i want this case to be decided before the elections i don't want because i know that your lordship has issued the finance bill issue to a seven judge bench and i don't want this to await that so i am restricting myself to the other grounds of challenge so first my lord we have challenged the finance the amendments brought to the foreign contribution regulation act of 26 uh, by the finance act of 2016 and in essence my lord those amendments were that prior to that amendment we have actually in our written submissions my lord we have given a chart of the amendments uh, and the amendment regarding the fcra my lord we don't interrupt but by a judicial order my lords have been pleased to separate and detag the issue regarding fcra there is a judicial order passed by your lordship no my lord so he has started with that my lord that's so why it's i was pointing out what order. we have challenged in this petition if your lordship just sees in this petition which is before your lordship today we have challenged the amendments made to the fcra also by way of the finance bill of 2016 and the amendment was that prior to that the uh the foreign contributions were prohibited to political parties and candidates and public servants by this amendment they have effectively permitted foreign contributions by saying that any contribution made by way of donation uh to through a subsidiary of a foreign company which is registered in india will not be treated as a foreign source so by this amendment effectively you have allowed so for example my lord suppose i am just giving an example a foreign company wanted to donate money to a political party it was earlier totally prohibited from doing so and in fact one of these cases went to the in fact this amendment was in a way brought in order to overcome a judgment of the delhi high court by which the delhi high court held that both the bjp and the congress party had received foreign contributions through a subsidiary of a foreign company at that time it was sterlight which was a subsidiary of vedant resources which was a uk based company and they said that therefore appropriate action should be taken against these political parties to overcome that the lord a retrospective amendment was brought through the finance act into fcra by saying that if the donation is made by a subsidiary of a foreign company in that case also that was a subsidiary sterlite was a subsidiary of vedant resources uk <laughs> then that will not be treated to be a foreign source <laughs> so this is the amendment which has been brought and we have mentioned this my lord at page uh, at page 10 of our written sub- that has strictly speaking no relevance to the challenge on the electoral bond scheme true true but i am only saying that that is perhaps the, why the solicitor mentioned that yes but that has been a lot that, that issue was deep in the segregation of three cases 31st of january 23 order your lordships my lord were pleased to segregate in this my lord the original amendment of 20 uh, brought in by the finance bill of 2016 to the fcra has been challenged right what is the next challenge in your petition we'll just at least have a broad yes, purview yes. and then we can go yes, on to this so the challenges are all uh, in this chart if your lordship just sees question so first is the amendment made to the representation of people act <clears throat> earlier my lord the act said 29c on the left side is the original and the right side is the amendment amended contributions to political parties are exempted at both ends that is 
it's uh, exempted at the end of the party which receives the donations from tax and it is also exempted at the end of the uh, donor that is the donor can claim an exemption by way of the donations that they have given to a political party now your lordship will see the amendment i have highlighted the relevant part provided that nothing in this subsection shall apply to contributions received by way of electoral bonds so therefore the reporting requirement as to who has donated to you in excess of 20000 which was earlier there has been removed for donations received through electoral bonds this is the first amendment to the representation of people act then they amended simultaneously the companies act all these amendments were brought in through the finance bill of 2017 finance act of 2017 now the companies act so there was a limit there was a cap of 7.5% of last 3 years average profits on the amount of corporate donations that any uh, that any company could give to a political party that proviso has been omitted by this amendment so this is another uh, thing other than electoral bond simultaneously in lord a slew of changes were made one was and all these have been challenged in our petition so earlier the requirement was that you have to disclose which political party you have donated to now my lord <coughs> in the amendment they say now after the amendment all that they have to disclose is the total amount not the donee political party they don't have to disclose which is the political party to whom they have given these electoral box earlier there was a requirement to disclose that then income tax act this has also been amended by this there was a requirement in the income tax act that every political party should maintain accounts of where they have received the donations from who has given them the donations now by the amendment it says so again the requirement of keeping a record is omitted for electoral bonds and then my lord d so everywhere my lord electoral bonds have been not only introduced they have been exempt from disclosure under the uh, companies act under the income tax act under the representation of, of people's act etc 